All right, today, uh, what we're going to do is work on our bibliography today. Right now, we're in the slide sorter view because you can see if you have all 32 of your slides ready to go here, okay, this is what's going to look like. There's a lot of slides, you've got your different jobs, so forth, like that. The one thing we want to make sure is we're going to add a new slide to the very end here, okay? So, on this, what I'm going to do is just do Control M. Make sure you've clicked at the end here so that the new slide pops up as slide 33. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this uh, slide to pop it up. And then this slide is going to be, this one's going to be your bibliography. This is your first slide for your bibliography. Since this is your first slide, you have to have two uh, action buttons on it. The first one, obviously, is going to be a home button. So if you look at slide 32, you have a home button there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. And then I'm just going to paste it. And then I'm going to go to slide 31. You need a forward button for the first slide. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it. Okay. Remember, the one rule that we have for these slides is you should have two action buttons per slide. You've got to have two action buttons. The first slide of every new job and the first slide of your bibliography should have a home button and a forward button or a next button. Okay. So there should be two. Now, on your bibliography, you will not have any pictures on those. Okay, remember your bibliography is just going to be citations. You should have, and I'm going to tell you, you should have no more than three citations per slide. Okay. Now, we're going to do Control M. Well, I tell you what, instead of doing Control M, let's go and copy slide 31. I'm going to copy this slide. Then I'm going to go to back to the end of uh, 33. I'm clicking at the end of 33 here. And I'm going to do Control B as in victory. And what I'm doing is I'm adding that slide at the bottom. Now that's probably going to have a job title. It should have a job title at the end of it. Again, this is just a bibliography slide. So what we're going to do is replace the word instead of being my in my case it's, uh, instead of geologist here. Okay, I got to get to it. Instead of geologist, mine's going to be bibliography. And now I can copy this one. And then I'm going to paste it five more times. Well, actually it's going to be, because we have to have... I figured, I, I'm estimating that we're going to have 12 uh, bibli bibliography slides. Okay? So right now you've got two done, so you're going to paste this 10 more times. So if I do that, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 44 slides. In my last slide, what two action buttons should I have then? Okay, we should definitely have a back button and a home button. So we need to get rid of this uh, forward button. And now I'm just going to go grab a home button real quick, which I can get simply from slide 33. I'm going to copy it and go back to 44 and paste it. So now when I look at this, I have my 44 slides.
All right, on this, now that we've got our 44 slides, including our bibliography, okay, we need to go to slide two. Okay, remember, we created a work cited button. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to click on that work cited button. Now, what I want you to do on that work cited button, we need to make sure if you click right in the middle of it, you have that dotted line around it, correct? Okay, you should have a dotted line. We don't want the dotted line. Okay, what we want to make sure we have is a solid line. So you're going to have to click right on that line and make it solid. Because if we just did the dotted line, the only action that would take place is on the words itself. But we want to be able to click anywhere on that button and we would be able to change it that, that way. Okay? So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to right click on, I right clicked on the wrong place. Right click right on that solid line. If you right click on top of the words, it's going to change it to the dotted line. Right click on that line. That way it pops up the option edit hyperlink. You may need to zoom in kind of like I did so you can really see it clearly because it's, it's a little bit more difficult. But we need to click on edit hyperlink. When we click on edit hyperlink, we'll see that it's hyperlinked to our last slide. We do not want it hyperlinked to our last slide. So what you need to do is do your down arrow and then go to slide dot dot dot. When we go to that slide dot dot dot, that pulls up all of our slides that we've created. Okay? We want to go to the very first bibliography slide. Now, here's here's the neat little thing. If you have not been able, if you haven't got all of your slides built yet, like you should have 32 slides for your jobs, and then your 33rd slide is your bibliography. If you have not done that, that's no big deal because once you create this link to that slide, it doesn't matter if that bibliography becomes the 103rd slide, it's always going to be connected to it. So right now some of you it might be at 15, it might be at 20 something, that's fine. But right now mine's connected to 33rd slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the bibli your very first bibliography slide and then click OK. And you'll see it says hyperlink to bibliography and I'm going to click OK. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that button is working right. So I'm going to click on the preview and then I'm going to click on work cited. And there it went. It went right to my bibliography. Okay. Now the great thing is I've got that I can check these buttons to make sure they work. I'm just going to check the uh, home button. Click on my home button. Sure enough, it takes me back to my home, my 3D room. Okay, and then I'm going to click on exit. Another thing that I want to show you guys real quick. I have been talking about the career questionnaires and how each one of your slides is referring back to your questionnaires. This is the uh, questionnaire that you guys have been working on before this. We had the six category or the six things that you had to answer. Brief description, education level, salary, task, projections, and why I want to pursue this occupation. Those are your six slides. So when you start doing this, the only thing I want, you do not put like brief description. You're not going to put that there. I'm only putting that there so I can show you how it relates to one another, how these slides relate to that questionnaire. What you're going to do is just write your description up there because when you go to present, then all you have to say is this job, this job is like this. And then you just kind of read what you have. But you'll see, you have brief description, the education level, salary, task, 
projections, why I want to pursue this occupation, and then the slide nine is back to your very first job, or your second job, which in this case mine would be athletic training. Okay, so that's how those slides relate. Then this would start all over. Since this is the first slide of this job, this would be the brief description. Then the second one, so it repeats over and over, just like your questionnaires did. Okay? So that should take care of the bibliography section as well as how all those relate to one another. All right, so let's talk about adding a little bit of flair to our 3D room. One thing I'll teach you is how to make a carpet, a carpet for the 3D room. It's actually very simple. It's just a la layering effect where you put one image on top of another. So what we're going to do is going to go to the insert ribbon. We're going to go to shapes and then we're going to grab a trapezoid which is under basic shapes. It's the sixth shape and now I'm going to draw it. I'll just draw it real quick. It does not need to be rotated or anything. It's actually perfect the way it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down to the bottom of my slide here and I'm going to kind of put it in the middle of the room. Now you can make it skinny like I've done or you can make it a little wider to kind of make it look like an area rug, you know, like maybe you got some of you guys have in your home. Okay? I just like to kind of keep it a little skinny. And you can put it like in the middle of your room, kind of like this, or you can extend it to the bottom of your slide to kind of give it the impression that there's more to that room than where you're standing at. Okay, so I'm just giving I'm just giving it the illusion that there's more to this room. Okay, your bottom trapezoid because we're gonna we're gonna put a couple of trapezoids. You can you can make this as complicated as you want, but we're gonna do a two layer uh, carpet. You can do a three layer if you want, but whatever you do, you gotta have contrast colors. Okay, so like your bottom layer should be a darker color. It should be. Okay just to give it that contrast. So I've got like this orange here. I can make it a blue. I can do whatever. It's really up to you. What we're going to do now is we're going to copy this image exact, the exact way it is. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to put it so that it's right over top of the first trapezoid that I made. Okay, so it covers it up. Now I use my arrow keys just to let you know and then if it's not exactly matching up I hold down the control key and then use my arrow keys to make it move just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is something a little bit a little bit different than what you're, gonna, you're used to. I'm going to make the image smaller but I want to keep the sides so that the, all the way around it it has basically the same space all the way around it. Okay, to make it symmetrical here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm going to grab one of the corners, hold down control, and then grab a corner, and then just start bringing it in. And do you see how when you bring in that, it starts making everything the same size? So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, and I'm going to keep it highlighted because right now it's the same color as your trapezoid that you just did, right? This, this is where it's going to be pretty neat. Now I'm going to add a texture to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on it so I can bring up my drawing tools format at the top, my ribbons. I'm going to go to shape fill and then I'm just going to go to a texture. Now you can use any texture you want but I like the first four at the top because really those kind of give you a cloth fill. In fact if you notice like this one says a canvas this one's denim, and then this one is a woven mat. So what I, I'm just going to choose the woven mat. And now what you've created there is a rug or a carpet. Something simple. Now like I said, you can get as complicated as you want. As you can see, you can layer it so you can make it look like it's got three parts to it. Okay, But I'm just making a two-part, uh, a two-layer uh, object. Okay, I'm trying to keep it simple. All right, so we've got we've got our rug here. Now later on, if you want to add like lights, 
maybe you could go a clip art or something like that to try to add a light to the top or maybe a light at the bottom kind of give those shading impressions you can do a lot of different things to add I've seen people add like velvet ropes to it to make it look like it's been walled off or uh, so you can't get up close to the pictures you can do a lot of different things to make it look like a room you would go into like in a museum or something like that so this in a nutshell is your career 3d room so now it's up to you to put in the rest of the work.